This is the most underrated digital removable all-on-4 option on the market, including a printed denture base and closed titanium bar and mill denture tees, all on friction fit corners abutments from Atlantis. I will show you the entire digital workflow from designing the denture to the bar with a special library I created and many tips and tricks you can use in other digital workflows. Kronos All on 4 is a dental prosthesis solution that uses a tapered abutment design to retain a cap on the abutment by surface friction, all with the functional stability of a screw or cement retained prosthesis. I created four digital design videos in which I explain each design step in detail. I will leave the links in the description. So before you convert all your all on X cases into Kronos cases, there are some indications to observe. The most critical of them is that you need at least a prosthetic space of 12 to 15 millimeters. While it seems a lot, it's actually not that much when we consider that screw retained all on X cases require at least 12 millimeters as well. But we as dental technicians have found workarounds with internal bars, for example, to compensate for clinical problems. The first step, the denture design is straightforward. One of the great things about Kronos is that it allows for versatile design. You can create a full denture with a complete flange or a reduced flange for patients who need a free palate or have a gag reflex. If you don't have an antagonist, you can download the antagonist disc from my Patreon page. It's free for supporting members along with many other items. Supporting the channel through Patreon is greatly appreciated and I thank every member. A special shout out goes to our latest VIP member, Robert Stark. Thank you so much for your support. After exporting the initial denture design with the base, we can proceed to the bar design using a new order form. We will use the initial denture setup as a pre-up and it's always advisable to use an approved design or a denture try-in before moving into the bar design. I've created a special library for this workflow utilizing dense black corners caps as scan flex. To ensure accurate scanning, the shiny caps need to be dulled. I use Simbrio, applying a very light coat with a brush. Since this is an experimental workflow, I'm offering the library for free for download to supporting members on my Patreon page. I've seen technicians use everything from foot spray to sheep cat spray, but Zimbrio works the best. The library includes four cap settings, two short and two long caps, with or without vent holes. The long sleeves cover the entire corners caps, while the short ones are about two millimeters short. When setting up the tees in the bar design, prioritize spending more time on the bar itself rather than the teeth. Under abutment bottoms and advanced set, set the profile border height to zero to avoid a latch at the transition between the border and the bar. The first step in the bar design is to establish a plane that is horizontal to the teeth by defining three points on the pre-up. Ensure the total space between the bar closure and the denture teeth incisal is at least five millimeters for stability. Hold the shift and control buttons and double click the upper arrow of the bar control tool to snap the bar against the established plane. For good support of the denture, extend the distal part of the bar into the central fossa of the last posterior tooth. Set the distance of the gingival at 2 mm and click pull down to automatically adapt the bar design to the gingival contour, ensuring sufficient space of the denture base. Set the overall bar thickness to 3 mm and while holding the shift and control key, pull on one of the lingual control arrows to achieve an even thickness throughout the bar. Adjust the bar pillars to a minimum thickness and double click so that no parts of the bar design intersect with the pre-up setup. To prevent holes in the mesh and potential issues in the next steps, I import the ScanFlex scan and export both the bar and the ScanFlex scan as meshes. Right click on save and select save scene as mesh. Ensure that only the bar is visible without any other option before exporting it as a mesh. Including other objects in the mesh may lead to errors in the following steps of the process. Afterward, we return to our denture design. In the denture design, the first step is to add and remove a new jaw scan. 
Therefore, we're going to load the scan that we exported in the bar design. We're going to load base with bar and we are exchanging it as a new jaw scan. Therefore, we have to go under scan alignment and pick one point on a similar location. Click OK and replace the entire scan data. Now we have a mesh with a bar in our design. We have to adjust the denture design bottom first because we still have the old one. Make sure there are no intersecting. That's why we imported the ScanFlex scan. Otherwise, we will have bleed through underneath. You also have to adjust our denture bottom. Here, I just click apply because I like my old design. Now we can go into freeform denture and we can add and smooth any areas that we want. We can add any materials. We can add and smooth any things that we want to make the denture look nice. Here, these are my preferred settings to adapt the denture base to the teeth. You don't have to follow it. That works best for me if I'm milling the teeth. If you want to print the teeth, you're going to uncheck Consider Bridge Tool Diameter. This is only if you want to print the teeth. If you want to mill the teeth like I do, you have to check this box. I'm going to click OK, Apply, and the denture base and the teeth are adapted. The next step on the item list is to import the bar design that we exported in our bar design step. Therefore, I'm going to go to Add, Remove Mesh, and I'm going to bring in a generic mesh. I'm going to load the bar itself. It might look that it is aligned perfectly, but I want to make 100% sure that it is. So I'm going to go under Align Meshes and align the bar manually again by selecting a couple of points to make 100% sure it is aligned to the bar. If it turns blue, it's perfect. The new aligned bar mesh, I'm going to export again. I'm going to double check that there are no extra meshes in the picture. If you see any extra meshes, you will have problems later on. I'm going to export the scene again as a mesh. and I'm going to open a new design window. I'm going to import the bar as a mesh. Click on Pontic, select any number that you want, next and finish, and then Go to the design of the gingival bottom. Here under bottom properties, you can define the space you want to have between the bar and the denture base. I found that point two and point three works good. I'm going to make sure that no other meshes are in the picture than the virtual bottom. I'm going to export it. I'm going to name it as bar cutter. Then I'm going to go into the export mode and I'm going to add and remove another mesh because I cannot modify the virtual bottom. So I have to import it as another mesh. The new imported mesh I can modify. I'm going to click on edit mesh and I'm going to select all to close the holes underneath. I'm going to select close holes. That will make it a solid Mesh. The solid mesh I can export now as a mesh and I'm going to override the bar cutter mesh that I already created. Back to the denture design, click under export mode and freeform, freeform the merged gingival restoration. Here I'm going to go to attachment, subtract and under library, I'm going to scroll all the way down to load a file. I'm going to load the bar cutter tool. Click on Rotate, and as you can see, it's in perfect alignment with the internal bar that I already have. Click on Apply. If you see any errors, then uncheck Cut to Gingival. I'm going to import the bar again because I want to make sure it's intersecting actually through the entire Gingival to be able to insert the bar from the top. Therefore, I'm going to hold the shift key on a keyboard and move the mouse carefully up until it's intersecting fully with the gingival design. So I'm going to be able to insert the bar from the top. Click apply again, click on next. And there I have the bar cut out out of the entire gingival portion. 
Now I can mill the bar, I can print the base, I can mill or print the teeth, loot everything together. If the holes are a little bit too small, I can ream them out later on in the denture finishing process. I'm going to plan on making a video about the whole assembly process. So stay tuned for the next video. If you're interested in this, give it a thumbs up. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Hit the notification bell. Until then, stay tuned.